Hey, it's Steve from Use Themes. Let's continue on building our widget vault and uh, move on to the mega menu dropdown widget. This is one part that really confuses a lot of users, but it's really actually quite simple to build. So we built the base of our vault here with our full screen slideshow and our bars above and below. But uh, this is now what we want to cover, how you do this cool mouse over big dropdown menu. And again, it's not built using the menus widget in Muse, it's built using the composition widget. And let me show you how. So I'll go back to our site here and I just removed the slideshow for now so it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So the next thing that we're going to do is let's just create this button or what we want that kind of browse button to look like. And I'll do that really quick by just dragging this text over. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Let's select, or let's call this browse and let's just make it orange. Okay, and then the last thing we could do, I think I, what I did was I centered this in this box. So we could add a little stroke to this box, just like that. Okay, and then now we just need to push that text down within it. And you can do that using probably this space before command. There you go. So this is space before your line of text. And we just add about five, it pushes it down nicely to the middle. Okay, so that's gonna be our button. And now we need to overlay the composition so that we can actually see this drop-down menu. Okay, so let's go into our widget library, not the Muse Themes widget library. This is just going to be the default Muse composition widget. And under compositions, let's select blank and drag that out onto the canvas. Okay, so now we've got the blank composition widget out. And the way that these widgets work, if you, you've you got the trigger areas, and these are these boxes below. Basically, these are the areas you interact with for something to happen to the target. And the target is this big area. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have one of the triggers sitting up above the browse button at the top. And we're going to have the target area show when we mouse over the browse button. So to start off, let's just delete out two of these triggers. We only need one. Okay. Now let's move the target, the big area, into place. So with the... If we click once on the widget, it will move the whole thing around. If we click twice, now I'm just moving the target. So let's just move the target up into kind of the area where we want this menu. And let me close this so it's a little easier to see. Okay, now our target looks like the menu. We're going to just remove the stroke and we can style this however we want. So we'll make it black. And you know what, maybe let's put an orange stroke on it for now and we'll set that a little bigger. Okay. So that's kind of what our menu is going to look like. Now we need to move the trigger into place. So if we click onto the trigger and we drag it up here, we're going to kind of just size the trigger so it really overlaps or hides the browse button completely. We want to make sure if anyone goes remotely near that browse button, the menu is going to appear. The next thing we need to do the trigger is we need to make sure our states are set at normal. This always gets you when you're working on widgets. So you make a modification to it and you're only on the active state. We want to be deleting out all these excess states and we want to just style the normal state. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to clear the fill and we're going to clear the stroke. Okay, so once we've cleared those, now you can see our trigger area is still there and it's still on top of browse. It's just not showing any sort of fill or anything like that. And all of our states look empty as well. So we're good to go. Okay, so that's kind of the basic setup of this. So now we just need to look at the widget flyout panel and you can see we have composition options in here. And the main things we're going to need to control is where we've got show target. So right now it's set to on click. That means if I click browse, the menu is gonna show. I want it to be on rollover. So if we bring up this menu, we're going to show the target on rollover, okay? Now we have an option to hide the target or hide the big menu. Um, in there we have on rollout and what this means is on rollout of just the trigger. So if I rolled off this browse button to select something on the menu, I wouldn't be able to do it, it would hide. So we need to select on rollout of trigger and target like that. There, now we will be able to select something on this menu and it won't hide it. So. And then we've got other things like transition speed, all that. We don't really need to worry about that. I do like to have triggers on top selected. What this means is that the trigger just sits on top of any other content within the widget. It just keeps things a little simple. And I'm gonna select hide all initially. And what that will do is hide the target area so that when the site first loads, you don't see this menu. Um, you'll need to browse over the button or click the button for it to show. So let's preview how this looks and see if we set it up correctly. 
there. So we've got a browse button, some weird bug, it shifted to the left a bit, but if we mouse over it, you can see our menu comes out below. So that's looking pretty good already, other than the, the fact that this shifted to the left, but uh, let's see if we can fix that up real quick. Sometimes these issues are just related to layering. Um, and in this case, I'm doing this example quite quick, so most everything's on the same layer. So you probably won't run into issues like that when you're doing this and uh, not doing it so fast for a demo, but we can bug fix that another time. Let me finish up this demo and show you now how we add content to this menu. So we can actually put anything we want in this box. We could put images or text, but what we need to do is we just need to make sure that when we're actually putting something on it, we have it selected. So right now I've got the target box selected. And if I just bring up my text tool and draw a text box in there, I could type anything I wanted. So this would say something like widget number one, and we'll just call this videos. Of course it's in black right now, so I'll change that to white and up the size. But there, so now that we've kind of got some text on there, we can add as much as we wanted. And let's preview it again, and see how it looks. Okay, so I mean, the, the text shows and hides along with the menu. You just have to make sure you're placing that text directly into that target area. Boy, that browse button's really bothering me how it's uh, off to the center like that. Let's see if we can fix that real quick. So I'm just gonna move my whole menu out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna create a new layer. So. Let's uh, have a look at our layers panel here. We've only got one layer. So I'm gonna create one called master. This is always a good way to build out your site. And I'm going to just make sure that everything on here, I've selected all, I'm going to go move to layer and master. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change layer one to be menu. I'm going to move layer one or the menu layer up above master and I'm just going to click our menu here and move that to the menu. Okay. All right. Let's see how that works. Did I fix it on the fly? Preview that in the browser. Nope, I didn't. I failed. Anyway, we'll figure that one out later. But the point of this video was to show you how to build this mega menu widget. And I think we've sufficiently done that. So. Remember how powerful the composition widget is? A lot of people don't really understand how powerful it is because they think that you know, you can't include images or text or something like that within it, but the composition is really defined as a widget that can contain anything and you can control its appearance using triggers. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that explains a little bit more about how we built this menu. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks. Hey, Steve again. I realized right when I finished up this video that I know why this button is offset to the side. So I'll show you. Let's move this menu out of the way. And if we click on this browse link I created here, it's still pinned. That's the problem. So it's still pinned to the left because I duplicated it based on this pinned element. But with that selected, if I remove the pinning and then let's just move this menu back into place and then preview it. There you go. Now it's centered. Success. I'm glad I came back to finish that. <laughs> Cheers.